Welcome back to the channel, everybody. More specifically, welcome to my bedroom. It's been raining outside and I don't really have anywhere good to film, so it is what it is. Today's video, I just wanna take a look at what's inside my bag. We are coming up on my one year anniversary of me playing, and so I just wanted to take a look at what's consistently stayed inside of my bag and talk about what I think personally makes a good beginner's bag. Nice low key video for you guys today. I'm just gonna take a look, see what's inside. So first things first, we are going to do putters, uh, and these are specifically my putting putters. I typically do not throw these, although I did throw them yesterday, and I got an ace, but I forgot my SD card, so I didn't film that round, even though I was supposed to. So putting putters, pretty much since the beginning, I have been putting with wizards. Now wizards come in tons of different plastics. Uh, I primarily like the super soft, or my favorite one is actually this hourglass stamp, super, super soft from my favorite brewery back home in Orlando. So, Wizards are going to be my putting putters. They just kind of have this almost chalky, velvety feel to them that I just can't beat. The numbers on Wizards are going to be 2302, so they do have a decent amount of fade at the end, even of your putt, which I've found for me specifically that putting with a little bit of hyzer coming out of my hand is just what's going to be most accurate. So that fade does kind of put it on a more consistent arc if that makes sense. So for my style of spin putting, uh, wizards have been great. I don't mind beaded putters, they're awesome. Uh, this gold one is the one that I aced with yesterday though, 200 feet downhill. So, wizards for life, baby. Wizards for life. So also in my top pouch, I keep my approach discs. So I've got one in here that I'm experimenting with, but the others are very consistent. So approach and my throwing putters would kind of fall into the same category. I've got the same original Envy that I bought. Flight numbers on Envy's are going to be 3302. This is a soft Neutron Envy. I really am a big fan of the Neutron plastic for Maxium MVP. It just feels really good to me. But when I'm afraid that this is gonna flip up too much or I want something that's a little more stable, I also have a Glow Envy. It's gonna have the same numbers, but their Glow plastic is definitely going to be more stable. Just makes beefier discs and they tend to stay beefier longer. So. Envies are going to be my throwing putters and my approach discs. Pretty much anything that's inside of 150 feet, I'm probably grabbing one of these. The disc that might actually kick the Envy out of that slot is going to be the Innova Toro. Now I actually won this disc at my last tournament. The tournament director dropped his mini and I found it in the middle of a giant field. And so my reward was this super rad metal flake, orange gold Toro. Super cool, great stamp. Uh, I really just like the way this feels specifically for forehands. If I have the option to forehand approach, I'm probably taking it. And this just comes out of my hand very clean. It does dump when you throw it though. So it doesn't have as much glide as my Envy's. It definitely requires more speed. The numbers aren't on here. I do think that the Toro is going to be more like mid range, whereas the Envy's like a three speed. I think this is a four or a five. I'm not sure. Someone will correct me in the comments. That's fine. Um, but I really like how consistently this thing kind of dumps out of the sky. So if I'm throwing into the side of a hill or something, this can be pretty reliable. So I'm experimenting with this. It might kick my Envy out of the slot at certain ranges. It's a pretty good disc. Last but not least in my approach category is going to be the glitch, guys. I know a lot of people love it and a lot of people hate it, and I just kind of jump back and forth between those two. But for the most part, if I'm hmm, within 80 feet of the basket, I'm probably throwing this on a backhand, either to lay up or to actually give it a run. Just in the past week, I've had two throw-ins that were in that 80-foot range with the glitch, just by kind of putting it out to the right and letting it fade in soft. It just seems to get lucky, and the disc is magic. So, I really like my glitch. Super great disc. Again, if you don't know the flight numbers on this, if you don't know about this disc, it is a hybrid catch disc. So, it's kind of like an ultimate frisbee combined with a disc golf disc. One speed disc, y'all. Seven glide, zero turn, zero fade. I would agree with that for the most part. Even when I throw this thing flat with like minimal power, it still does kind of want to turn to the left on a backhand for me as a right-hand backhand player. Um, but if you just absolutely hammer it like you're throwing it at full speed, it can handle that power and it will go dead straight. So I think those numbers are accurate. It might be a little more understable, but haven't been able to figure out the numbers on this. 
But the glitch is magical, y'all. Get yourself a glitch, get yourself a polecat, get yourself one of those discs that you can just kind of lightly toss and run at the basket. It's great for uphill shots. It's just nice and soft. And I like that it's light because it just sits down. So that's gonna wrap up my approach and my putters. So next up is going to be my mid-range category. I typically have four to five discs in the mid-range category because I think they're probably some of the most useful discs that can be in a beginner's bag. As we're learning our arm speed, as we're learning how to throw properly, you're probably gonna be able to throw your mid-ranges almost as far as your drivers. So starting out with a disc that taught me a whole lot and I still bag because it's great for the woods is going to be the MVP uplink. This is an understable mid-range. This thing is probably one of the best discs out there that can teach you how to hyzer flip. You just throw it on hyzer and it's understable enough that it's gonna pop up to flat, maybe even burn over, so that we're learning where those levels are. If you throw it flat, it should hold the turnover nice and long. It just, it just wants to go. So the MVP uplink, very beginner friendly disc. I would say that if you're looking to build your bag, get one of these. Just go ahead, get an MVP uplink. I picked this one up because I wanted an understable mid and the stamp's really cool. Just as a rule of thumb, you probably will find a theme in my bag. It's I always have an understable, kind of a neutral to stable, and an overstable option in each of my slots. I like to have all those boxes checked because if we remember back to my previous video, your discs are tools and we need tools that do different jobs. And so having an understable, a neutral, stable, overstable option it just opens up an entire world of shots for you. So, uplink is going to be my understable option in the mids. Let's go to the extreme of that. Axiom Pyro. This thing is super overstable in terms of a mid-range, um, at least for me. There are more overstable options out there, but I really like Gyro. Uh, I've just been enjoying throwing it. I like their plastic. So the Axiom Pyro is going to be a 5-4-0 two and a half fade um and i honestly think that two and a half could easily be a three this thing really wants to dump if i throw it completely flat it's always going to hook up if i throw it on hyzer forget about it this is primarily a forehand disc for me because it can just handle all sorts of power great for scrambling getting out of those nasty little thick spots on the sides of the woods if you're going to throw like flex forehands out for scrambling and stuff like that excellent overstable option and now my favorite disc of all time that's ever been made. We're talking about my Axiom Hex. The Hex starts out, I think it's a pretty stable option. It's five speed, five glide, negative one turn, one fade. So really straight flyer. When I was first starting out, you know, uh, I was learning and it would hook up to the left and it still has just that little bit of late stability sometimes. But for the most part, this is actually leaning more towards my understable option. This is my favorite distance hyzer flip mid-range. This will easily go a lot further than my uplink and I can hyzer flip it and it will go dead straight as long as I get it to flip up to flat with pretty much no fade. Uh, anything that's like 250 feet, 200 to 250 feet, I'm reaching for this. Um, if I do burn it over though, it's not coming out. This has become an excellent turnover disc for me as well. Hex is just bomb. Y'all, I think this probably is my favorite disc that I've ever thrown. If I could only throw one disc for the rest of all time, right now, my answer 100% would be the Hex. I can throw it far, I can putt with it. It's a great option. Go buy a Hex, do it. Now, I also have a Simon Lozado Hex. So in that glow plastic, these things are pretty sought after when they came out. Pretty cool disc. I actually have two of them. One of them's gonna go on my wall. Um, this one's a gray rim. A little disappointing because I waited like almost two months for this to come in the mail. And they have all those rad colors. And in the notes section, I said anything but red because I don't really like red that much. Uh, I got gray, but whatever. This is the one that I'm throwing so it doesn't really matter what it looks like. Uh, when you compare these two, this is just gonna be more stable just like when we were talking about the Indies. This thing just, nice and kind of beefy it still feels new and i imagine it'll stay that way for a while so any line where i want my disc to go dead straight and then just have a gentle pushing fade i'm probably throwing this disc if i throw it on hyzer it's just going to absolutely hold that line and it's going to dump so this is just essentially a beefier version of this that's all it is 
It flies really well. I love the Lazado Hex in that glow plastic. It glows really well and it is nice and stable. So if you can get your hands on one of these, I'd highly recommend doing it. But so my straight and my kind of stable options are going to be my hexes. And right now I'm experimenting with the Innova J. I don't really like it that much, um, but I've only thrown it maybe during two rounds and I haven't really thrown it too much. So it might make one of my future videos. Uh, it's just another disc that I got for playing that tournament. So cool stamp. I knew that the J was kind of a newer disc and a lot of the Innova players are saying that it's one of the greatest molds that Innova's released in a while. Um, it's not a bad disc. It is, a, it is a straight flyer. I think the numbers on it are like five, four, like zero, one, something like that. I don't know, someone post below. I could have looked these up, but uh, yeah. Innova J, interesting disc. It wants to fly straight. It does have that bit of stability to it. So kind of similar to, I would say, my Lozado Hex, um, except that I'm not sure I like the rim. The rim's a little bit deep. I kind of like shallow rim discs. So I'm experimenting with the Innova J, but this would fall into a category of uh, I'm trying it out, just like with my Toro. I'm just kind of working both of them to see if they make it into my bag. So those are my mid ranges. Next up is going to be my fairway drivers. So in terms of fairways, again, we're going with understable, stable, and then an overstable option. So right off the bat, probably my favorite fairway driver and my first one I bought is going to be my Latitude 64 River. Dead straight disc, one of the best on the market. I think this is a great beginner driver. So if you're trying to build your bag right now and you happened upon this video, go out, buy yourself a river and probably don't buy anything higher speed than this for a while. Because I remember when I first got it, this thing wanted to dump out of the sky on me. Now this is actually going to be probably my understable option. I don't really have a super understable fairway driver because I, anytime I need that option, I can kind of use my hex. So I haven't experimented too much, but if I put this on Anheuser, it will hold the line as long as I put it on steep enough. I can Heiser flip this and it's going to go dead straight. It's just a dead straight flyer that has tons of glide. Latitude 64 River, super rad. Next up is going to be my uh, Axiom Crave. Again, super rad disc. I bought this uh, because it's a forehand machine. I had one, I lost it in the water uh, and it was just like a hyzer flip forehand machine. It could handle all the torque in the world. I think that's one of the reasons I like gyro is gyro seems to be able to hold forehand torque a lot better, but I don't know. Uh, six and a half speed, because why not half speeds? Five glide, negative one, one. So a pretty straight flyer. This one is starting to become pretty stable for me. So it was very overstable when I actually bought this one, but now it's a pretty stable option. Um, really like it primarily a woods disc forehand. If I'm out in the open, I'm not using this. I'm trying to hyzer flip this on forehand. It's pretty much shots I would try to do with the river, but I'm worried about the river burning over. I'm going to be using my Crave. Um, if I give it enough height, it does kind of have like a nice long flex line to it. So I can't speak highly enough about Craves. Great fairway driver. The Volt by MVP has been in my bag for a while. And honestly, I'm not like the biggest fan of it. Uh, this is going to be my more stable option. Right now, this says 8, 5, negative 1, 2. Uh, so it's going to be the highest speed, I believe, out of all of my drivers. I think the Essence is also an 8 speed. But negative 1, 2, very accurate. Honestly, that could be a 2.5. I'd be fine with it. It could be a 3, and I'd probably agree with it. This thing's pretty stable. Um, it just kind of wants to turn and burn. I'm not super passionate about this disc. The Fission Plastic, I'm still trying to decide if I like it or not. Um, I have two discs in Fission Plastic. Sometimes they feel like they go farther. Other times I'm just like, man, I just kind of hate the way that plastic feels. Uh, so one of the reasons this is in my bag um, is because I know how it flies. I can throw it far. It might not be my favorite, but if there's a water carry or something that I'm worried about, this is the disc that I'm grabbing. So I'm not using anything else. So there's a bolt as my overstable slash throwaway option. This disc is wonderful. So the Discmania Evolution Essence or the Neo Essence, eight, six glide, negative two turn, one fade. Great disc. If you're looking to step it up from the river. So after you've been playing a couple months and you really like that river and you want something that's gonna go a bit further, 
I'd say go ahead and pick up the Essence. The eight speed is there, which means that it is kind of reachable in terms of speed for a noodle arm. Um, this thing will go just as far as my distance drivers when I get a hold of it today. Uh, it's a disc that's taught me a lot of lessons. Um, and you know, like I said, sometimes I'll, I'll throw like my beat in rate. I'm like, cool, let me throw my essence. And my essence goes even further, which truth be told probably means that I'm not throwing my rates hard enough. I'm not getting them up to speed, but I can get this up to speed and it's doing its intended flight path. I can throw this thing super flat. It's going to turn just a little bit and then it'll come back. So again, nice and straight. So I do kind of have a lot of discs in that straight option. The bolt's gonna be overstable. The Crave and the Essence are gonna be kind of like my workable. Sometimes they have different fades and I can change them. River's going to be dead straight to understable. So those are my four fairways. Moving on to control drivers. I gotta be honest, y'all. All of these are gonna be kind of discs that uh, are in the nine speed category. And I don't reach for them as much as I think that I should. I think that my arm is probably at a nine speed right now, but meh. I just don't right now. I don't know why, but I'll experiment with them some more. Uh, this is my super duper scramble disc. I've got one of the 12 time Ken Climo champion Firebirds. Um, probably the beefiest disc that's in my bag. Uh, giant flex forehand scramble shots. If I'm like just off the fairway or even deep in the fairway, uh, this disc is super, super rad. Pick yourself up a Firebird. I think everyone needs a very overstable option in their bag for pitch out forehands and things like that. They really can teach you a lot about how to scramble and how to get around corners. So Champion Firebird, super old disc. Got an Hourglass Stamped Gateway Assassin. I don't remember the numbers on this, um, but it's pretty straight flyer. I would say it's just like a beefier version of my river. Um, I think it's got like, you know, like negative two, one fade. So if I throw it completely flat, it does have a decent amount of turn to it. Um, I don't know. I just like the stamp a lot. I don't reach for it as much because um, I haven't thrown it as much. So this might end up on the wall, but it does live in my bag. And occasionally for like a little more distance, dead straight shots, this comes out. I've got a Glow Insanity from Axiom. And uh, yeah, pretty stable. I can throw this thing flat and it's definitely going to have some fade at the end. So I can throw little flex lines with it. This is probably going to be like the most workable disc that's in that slot of control drivers in the nine speed category for me um, and up from there. But yeah, really cool disc. Uh, I like to throw this at night when I'm doing field sessions as well because it is in that glow plastic, so it is nice and stable. And a disc that I used to throw a lot and now I don't throw as much anymore. We're going to be talking about the Axiom Virus. Uh, this thing is super duper understable. Uh, and again, none of these special editions have the numbers on them, but um, it's like it's like a negative three turn. I think one fade, maybe even more than that, guys. Uh, rim feels identical to the Insanity. These rims feel really good in my hand. Stamp is super duper rad. Um, however, I just don't reach for this as much unless I'm throwing a roller or I want to throw like some weird giant like turnover that might have a really late fade out. This disc is great for that, um, but very understable option in that category. So again, just like before, I've got a dead straight and overstable, understable, and kind of a more stable, stable option. So uh, this would be a great upgrade uh, if you're trying to break into like nine speed discs and higher, I think this is a great disc and this will also teach you how to hyzer flip. I do sometimes reach for this disc if I'm in a super tight tunnel in the woods and I want to hyzer flip something that I know is just going to go. This thing is really good. It's got a lot of push to it. So virus will teach you a lot, but it's very understable. And last but not least guys, we are in my driver category. So first up, Distance driver, uh, something that doesn't belong in my bag, but I got it for playing in a tournament and I just wanted to experiment with 13 speeds. I do have an MVP Octane. Um, 13 speed and fission plastic, so I think that you could probably drop that to like a 12 speed um, because I kind of can throw this disc sometimes. Five glide, negative one and a half turn, two fade. So a relatively straight flyer, maybe a little bit more on that stable, stable side. The Octane's pretty cool. Um, I don't reach for it too much. It's pretty great on some forehands for me, but again, this is a disc that if I've got a really long water carry, 
I'm probably throwing this disc because I'm not gonna be too sad if I lose it. I don't know if you guys feel that way about discs you get in tournaments, but uh, yeah. And I just don't know if I like Fission Plastic yet. So it flies, it does okay, but Octane is going to be kind of my like stable, stable option there. Next up is going to be my newer Star Wraith. Uh, if you've been playing for any amount of time, you've probably heard of Innova. And if you have looked into Innova at all, you probably know about the Wraith. It's one of the best selling discs of all time and for good reason, they're great flyers. This is a newer Star Wraith. The numbers on these things are 11 speed, five glide, negative one turn, and a three fade. They just want to dump. Uh, this is a newer line with those like newer kind of crazy stamps on them. This thing is super beefy. 173 grams and uh i i can barely throw this thing you know it's it's a contender for the most overstable disc in my bag like it's almost as overstable as my firebird so flex lines big scramble shots this is probably like my best distance flex flyer on a forehand um but so very uh niche times that i reach for this disc and i'm just trying to get this one beat in my original Star Wraith is also in there as well. Um, this is a completely different disc than my other Wraith. If you haven't watched my video comparing this to the Clash Wild Honey, go do that. You'll be able to see how these actually fly um, and show you the difference between buying a brand new Star Wraith and getting one that's flippy or just picking a whole new disc entirely from a different brand. So again, 11.5, negative 1.3. These numbers aren't accurate anymore. Right now, I would say this is 11 speed. I would give it five glide, maybe six glide. Um, and then we're gonna change that negative one to probably a negative two, and then the fade to a one. Um, it's almost understable, it's dead straight. I can hyzer flip this wraith, whereas this one, not a chance. Uh, this thing will go really straight with a small fade at the end. If I get it completely turned over with low height, forget about it, it's not coming out of it. Um, so very workable disc. Probably my go-to driver right now. I reach for this a lot, but it took me a year to get this thing to this point. So this is a very beat in star wraith. So this is something that's teaching me how to like cycle discs in my bag. Um, so I think wraiths are a good option if you want to upgrade to distance drivers. Um, but just know that right off the shelf, they're probably gonna be super beefy. That three fade is going to be more accurate. Um, love my wraith though. The beat in wraith, get one and just like slam it into trees. They're great. It'll turn out great. And then the disc that kind of flies a lot like my beat-in Wraith, but really is just going to be my straight flying, very stable option, is going to be the Clash Discs Wild Honey. I'm really excited to check out more of their discs in the future. Um, but this is a 12 speed, five glide, negative two turn, two fade. Uh, steady Wild Honey, probably like my favorite distance driver in my bag right now. Plastic is my favorite plastic. It's just like a little grippier than Star Plastic. Feels maybe a little bit nicer. Um, Clash is making some good discs, y'all. I think I'm gonna be purchasing a lot more of their discs in the future. I just really like this product a lot. Um, but yeah, so this is going to be my straight option. This is going to be my understable, very overstable, and then the Octane is kind of like a stable stable. So that's about it for my bag, guys. Um, after a year, it has changed a lot. I've got a whole stack of discs over here that uh, I don't use, I don't throw, um, that I just experimented with and really didn't like them. Uh, a lot of them are going to be in DX plastic or just discs that I've found and no one ever called me back. Um, but yeah, but after a year, I think that I've got a pretty good handle on what I need to be throwing and what I like throwing for my game. And I think that will always be an ever-changing medium, you know? We'll always be figuring out what we do want to throw uh, and just experimenting because you never know if you could change your game and get better unless we experiment. So uh, right now, I think a great place for you to start. If you're just trying to build your bag and you happen upon this video, uh, pick a putter that you like, you know, and after you like it, go ahead and get like two of them or three so you can practice some consistency. Approach discs, really nice. I put approach discs and throwing putters kind of into the same category. Uh, and I do think that like one of the glidey like hybrid discs can teach you a lot. I think that you should pick up a polecat, a glitch, something like this, really nice. And then from there, mid-range fairway drivers and up, pick understable, neutral to stable, 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 and overstable. So four discs in each of those slots, uh, mid-range, fairway, 
control drivers, up to distance drivers, and that's really all you need. You can buy doubles if you really like a disc. As a matter of fact, if you really enjoy a disc, I recommend go out and like buy that run if they still have it in the shop, find that run. Um, because discs do have some inconsistencies and they change. Um, but yeah guys, that's my in the bag after a year of playing. Hopefully maybe next year we'll do another one and see how it's changed from this. That would be pretty cool to do. But until next time, have fun, get better, stay decent.